This episode is brought to you by Hammerlock Apparel. Visit hammerlockapparel.com today. On today's episode, we talk about The Rock's entrance, how to eat crow as a heel, East Coast accents, and what Tyson likes best about Eddie Guerrero's in-ring work. It's Eddie Guerrero. It's The Rock. Let's go. On today's show, we are going to look at the match between The Rock and Eddie Guerrero. Happened on July 22nd, 2002. And you can find this match if you want to watch along. It's on the WWE Network's YouTube channel. uh, Just under that name, The Rock and Eddie Guerrero Raw 72202. And Tyson, do you have uh, anything you want to mention about this match before we get it started? You know, uh, well, the one thing that I would want to mention is, like, on, on Twitter, I, I put this on Twitter uh, a few months ago when people were asking about their favorite matches, and this one is right up there with being one of my very favorite matches ever on Raw. So the program of Raw, um, this, this is one of those matches that if anybody asks me, hey, what's your favorite match on Raw? Boom. It's Eddie Guerrero versus The Rock. Um, it's one of those, uh, there's something about it. There's something that holds on, has great, it has great, uh, timing. It has great aggression. It's under 10 minutes, which is unbelievable to to call like tell a story and put stuff together and be that electric and that solid for under 10 minutes. And a lot of kids don't know like, Oh, I need 20 minutes to be able to wrestle. Well, well, no, you don't, (laughs) you don't at all because, these are two of the best in the world, and they show you exactly how it's done. They don't draw it out, and it's absolutely one of those phenomenal matches that I encourage everybody. If you haven't seen it before, go back. If you're on the WWE Network or if you're on YouTube through WWE, you can find out. You can find this match. It's in July twenty second, oh two. So it's solid. Right on. Real- all right, and you have it queued up for yourself there now? You know what? It's all ready to go, my friend. And just a side note, when we were talking there, uh, I know we're both the uh, NB boys. We're both from New Brunswick. You know, I can only tell that you have an accent when you say dates. Isn't that funny? <laughs> yeah, it I, is. I, I want to I put that to the test. I want to have more people on from the East Coast. I want to eventually have people on, and I want East Coast people so that I can just hear them say the date to see if that's their tell because me and yourself have not been in New Brunswick in quite some time. And I thought I lost my accent, but I can tell a little, uh, when you say July, July, whatever, I can hear it. So I'm going to have to test this theory. (laughs) Right on. Let's do it. All right. Everyone else who's ready to watch along it. uh, The YouTube clip is going to be 11 minutes, 32 seconds. If you got the correct one and on the network, I'm not sure where it is, but I'm sure you can find it on there and we're going to start. At the count, I'm going to count down from three, and then we'll hit play. So three, two, one, go. So right away, if, you, if you're if you watching this right now, it's The Rock. He's coming to the ring. It's on his entrance. Of course, you can see that uh, always, always the, ro- the Rock comes prepared. He never wears anything silly. He's not out there wearing a whole bunch of garb. He's just, it's just, it's wrestling the way it should be. It's like, it's not focused on anything, but the person himself and there's something a little nostalgic to that now because you don't see that very often where guys will hit the ring uh and and they don't need anything they don't need any costumes they don't need any masks they don't need any face paint now watch this what first thing they're going to do is lock up and i've mentioned this before in many many things if you're not locking up for the sake of like a strong strong lockup like what are you doing what are you doing uh, it, like again, two lockups in a row, both really, really solid, straight in on each other. Uh, they don't miss a beat here. It's uh, the Rock, of course, is the big baby face. Eddie at the time was a heel. They had such a great promo at the start, and it starts right away. Now, there's something to be said about it psychologically when the baby face is uh, the first one to grab a hold or grab offense, uh, and so in, in doing so. There he is. There's the rock doing it, right? Grabbing that hammer lock and then going it right into their spot, showing his size, showing that he's way bigger. 
when Eddie comes in and takes that tackle and Eddie's the one that's bumping off of the runs. Normally, naturally, if you're on the run, you're the guy bumping the, the opponent. But in this case, uh, they switch roles because The Rock is a massive, massive human being. So now we're off those sweet, sweet Ricky Steamboat deep arm drags. Uh, and it, they're awesome. They're so good. Uh, right into Eddie doing a little bit of a flurry of high fly with the little in and out for the uh, arm ringer. And he takes his head off of the clothesline. And just um, the subtlety of this. Beautiful belly to belly by The Rock. Um, and this is the one that really, it still stands out as one of my favorite spots. And I'm going to pause it. I'm going to pause right there. If you guys pause along, that would be super spectacular. Um, first of all, uh, just because you're heel doesn't mean that you can't do stuff flashy. But sometimes when you're heel, it's better to have something flashy bite you in the ass. So that whole reverse through on the arm ringer, he was, uh, he. I call it the flippy flu. I always tell guys when they're in the ring and I got their wrists and I go flip flip, they usually know that they can do all their little nonsense with the cartwheels and stuff like that. He he set, he does that so fluid and so beautifully that people would get behind him with something, that kind of an action that is so cool. But these guys are such professionals as The Rock is going to remain the baby face. He just takes his head off of the clothesline. Of course, Eddie bumps like a madman. It just, it adds uh, such a mystique. Like, it's, it, it brings it right back. It's like, oh, cool, look how cool I am. And then, no, I got shut down. Uh, another great example of that, before we continue, is Owen Hart. Owen Hart was the master of eating crow. I'm, I'll say eating crow, where he would do something flashy and cool and then immediately uh, pay for it. So it's just, it's one of those things that, um, uh, is kind of lost because everybody wants to be cool. Um, everybody wants to get their stuff in and be over. But unfortunately, in this business, we're we're losing we're losing track and we're losing um, what makes wrestling great. And it's good guys versus bad guys. And the good guy is going to be the guy that's always ahead of the game. He's not a chicken shit. He's he's always going to be the strong guy that doesn't cheat. Um, and is more technically sound. And the babe, and the heel is always going to be a little bit. There's going to be a little bit of a chicken shit element in there. And it should be. And it should be. And, and he's always going to, uh, like, even if he's doing something that's relatively new and awesome, um, he's just going to pay the price for it. Uh, that whole spot leads into, you can see that there was a miscommunication there. I don't know if you've noticed it, but there is a miscommunication where Eddie goes through the ringer, uh, or is to whip him off the ropes, and then he spins through, and then the rock spins through and gives him kind of a kind of a weaker boot, and then sends him off into that overhead belly to belly, which is awesome. And I would love to see more guys do those that over the head, off the ropes, belly to belly, because it's it's the same as a power slam. It's basically the atomic drop, the over the head belly to belly, the power slam. Uh, slingshot. Uh, these moves are completely forgotten in professional wrestling in the year 2020. Can we please, for like, can we please go back a little bit, study old tapes, and then what's old is new instead of trying to figure out new flippy stuff? Uh, can we go back and maybe do stuff that was actually effective and actually, uh, um, uh, like solid, like uh, like something that actually works <laughs> instead of trying to construct your own thing, which I understand be innovative, but let's, let's, let's use a little bit of the old stuff. Old is the new innovative. Let's go with that. You're here. I, I agree with you on that one. The, uh, that first minute was pretty intense in that match. Well, see, Scott, see, you know, that, that that's exactly my point. Like that's why this match stands out is because like they uh, go right to it. Uh, there's no wasted motion, that, but it's not rushed. It's such a great feel because it looks like a competitive fight, but they're not rushing. And if you've watched wrestling and you've watched it long enough, you know when guys know they only have six minutes and are just trying to speed through stuff. And then you know that there's real pros out there like these guys that know that they have uh, enough time, not a lot of time, but are able to make everything count. So we are, if you are with me, uh, you are at the, one of the best cutoffs um, in the business. This all as well was a little bit of a, 
um, a call. You could tell that it was a call and that they kind of lost lost it a little bit with the Rock throwing a, like a huge uh, uh, left hook, right hook, right hook over the top of Eddie's head, like completely missing him. Uh, but that back suplex and that bump where he's holding the back of his head, not to bump his head, um, is definitely just so enjoyable to watch because that's a that's a legitimate cutoff. So now, if you press play, he's going to be uh, selling a bit. He's going to sell a little bit because he just took a beating, and then he's going to go to some heat. And the best part about this is how aggressive. And that's the thing I love about Eddie Guerrero. You can love his frog splash. You can like his high fly. You can like his character. Uh, for me, there's a lot that I loved about Eddie. And the one thing that I took away from Eddie a lot was how aggressive his style is. Like, he won't, like the referee is the only person that is pulling uh, Eddie off of you. We get into a trade situation here, uh, which leads into a big back elbow by Eddie. Good bump by The Rock. And look, watch the face of The Rock. Watch his expressions right now as he looks like he's in pain. Um, he's always registering. He's always selling. Um, they're going to get to it here because I've watched this match a million times. Right here. Bang. He's going to be selling on the ropes. And I've always said the best baby faces in the world are the ones like Ricky Steamboat and the Macho Man. Guys that sell using the ropes. Hanging off those ropes. They're Physically unable to lift themselves on their own, but their mental capacity and fighting spirit makes them pull on the ropes to try to stand. Um, if you're a good baby face, look into doing something more along those lines. Look to do stuff that is solid like that. Um, of course, Eddie now is going to go and try to grab a rest hold. The best way to settle down all that action is by rest holds. And so they're going to take a second here. Um, and what I want you to watch is not just Eddie cranking on this chin lock, which is awesome. Um, he always stays pretty active in it. And the chin lock, as you can see, there's no daylight. He's really tight in there. But watch the rock sell it. Like, he's nonstop moving with it. Great drop kick. That's a great drop kick. Kids, if you're watching and you want to do a good drop kick, emulate that. Try to copy that because that's awesome. What makes a good drop kick in your uh, expert opinion? I, you know what, Scott, the best the thing that I love about it is I like I like a drop kick that is like completely on the chest. I'm not. Uh, you can't go for the head. I'm all right with the head, but I, like you get massive impact off the chest of a human being. So if you get it up high underneath the chin, right on that, like right at the top of the chest, and like you give it. You, as you can see, Eddie tucks his legs in, and then he fully extends his legs out, uh, giving that momentum off of the rock's chest to turn his body so he's safely uh, not hurting himself as well um, and not hurting the rock, giving the rock an actual good bump so that he can take a really good bump on it. It's probably the best way to do it. Now, um, this is the only part that, uh, like, as you could tell in this, this whole match, that this is basically these dudes are kind of on the fly. They don't really plan that much. Um, they And what is crazy is that whole spot where he has the vice on him with his legs, has a scissor lock, and then he's grabbing the ropes, and the, and the referee just notices it for no reason. He just uh, – he said, hey, get off those ropes, and he has to let go of the hold. That's the only thing that's uh, – that's just all call, and they just don't draw it out. The only reason I'm sure is they know as their Hebner is right there, they know that they only have so much time. So if he's in the earpiece and saying you have like five minutes left, they, they're not going to pull any more out of it. Now, if they had 20 minutes, these two pros would have been milking those ropes for a little bit longer. But they had to go for the break. They had to get somewhere where they could actually get a, a good, good break in there without um, like making that, that hold, that scissor lock on the head. Uh, look ineffective. Like he, he just, if you pop out of that hold, then you just look silly. Uh, plus, it's The Rock. You don't want The Rock, uh, who is the top, top baby face in that company. You don't want him grabbing the ropes because it's not a tap out situation, but you don't want him having to use the ropes. He's supposed to be as strong as possible. So, it's, it's it, the best way to do it is just have the referee, and it's simple. Like, uh, like you don't have to overcomplicate it. He just, 
Ref seated, grab the ropes. Okay, let go of the hold. And as you can see now, they're right back to that chin lock. And the best part about this chin lock is the amount of work that Eddie Guerrero puts into it. He'll get on his heels or on his toes and start grinding, like pushing forward into the rock's head. And that's, that's such a subtle, subtle little thing. You don't have to, um, you don't have to overthink it. You don't have to like, you don't have to sit there and do five more drop kicks. All you have to do is push your feet into the ground. Like you're actually trying to squeeze the guy's head off. It's fantastic. Yeah. He's using his whole body for a chin lock laying on the ground. Without, yeah. And that's, and that adds so much more than having to do a whole bunch more. As you can see, the rock's firing up. Beautiful punches. I'm still a huge fan of rock punches. I think they're the best just because they're flashy, super flashy. He always made contact. You can always hear, if you listen to the video, you can hear the actual smack in the side of Eddie's neck. Um, he gets that little fire up, gets turned around, takes that clothesline, kips right up, and, like, here it is, the best false finish ever. That's the best false finish. There is no better false finish than that. All it was was a pin. There was no craziness to it. Big Rana by Eddie, still using high fly Eddie moves because he's smaller man. He's going to use that aerial assault, but it looks like a million bucks. Hot shot over the top ropes, another old school move that should be brought back right into the frog splash and misses. That that's the most intense two minutes of professional wrestling. You could have told a whole they could have had that match just for two minutes and sold me on this match for a lifetime because I have been sold on a lifetime of it, like 18 years <laughs> of this. Spine buster in. How does that feel to miss a frog splash off the top? You know what? I'm not a, like a super high flyer. I've been dropped a few times, but like uh, the best way is just to take it as flat as possible. That's the best way to take it. And there it is. And like, I know, I know it's crazy that he just, he misses that frog splash, sells up, um, so if you pause right there, he sells up off of that frog splash, uh, gets to the ropes because he's still in command. Uh, he charges them into the spine buster, uh, off the ropes for the people's elbow, which is, you know, everybody says it's hokey. I get it's a little bit hokey, but he still delivers it, uh, very, very well. Um, it's not, it's not, it's not hokey yet. I guess the, uh, off the ropes, the running off the ropes, is what a lot of old guys would get on. But that's where the evolution of professional wrestling, um, the, you, you have to have some slack. There has to be um, a, a, a little bit of balance between both actions. Um, so I always, I always enjoyed that part. I always enjoyed um, The Rock doing the people's elbow because it's that little bit of entertainment that people can take away, but yet still delivering a very, very solid, uh, elbow drop to the, the heart of an uh, opponent. So uh, I was always a fan. I always will be a fan. But how about that false finish of him going for the um, – he kips up. He's ready to go. He just took that offense. He does the Hogan sell, um, gets up off that kip up, and then uh, right into that rock. It look, looks like a rock bottom. Rock bottom is turned right into a pin. One, two, kick out right into the Rana, into the hot shot, misses the frog splash. They have every bit of professional wrestling in nine minutes and 13 seconds that you'll see on any, any match, yet there was barely anything used. Like uh, I always talk about five moves of death. Um, you didn't even see all five moves of death. All you saw was the rock belly to belly. You saw his uh, punches. You saw the spine buster. You did. You, he teased his finish being the rock bottom, and then he led to the people's elbow. Same with uh, Eddie Guerrero did the the back suplex. Um, he worked into a bunch of different moves, uh, just choke holds, drop kicks. He did a couple drop kicks. That's not even the signature. That's just a basic. Anybody can do those fundamentals. Um, just leading into uh, just a, a fabulous, fabulous match. He goes for his finish, teases it, misses it finish we're home um yeah so on, on the scale of uh one to ten this, this one's a 12 with me um just because I, like and that's what i want people to 
if, if you want to chime in, like uh, message in, I want to I want to know your opinion on your favorite Raw match, and maybe we can get to it. I have a whole bunch of ideas down the line. It's not just going to be Raw. It's going to be a lot of different matches. But like, man, if we're gonna if we're talking professional wrestling, um, and you and you the first thing, hey, what's your what's your first match? What's your favorite match? And if that person goes, uh, oh, it's The Rock versus Mr. Perfect. There's something that stands out with these type of matches that people will hold on to forever. And that's what you want in life. If you are aspiring to be a professional wrestler, these are the kind of matches you want to have. And it's just like that one. Simplicity, intensity, and by far just great timing. Great timing and execution of your stuff. Beautiful. I agree completely. That that ending sequence was just tremendous. Um, and what you mentioned there, maybe that is a good question of the show for everybody listening. Leave your comments at the bottom here. What is your favorite Raw match of all time? Any era, doesn't matter. Your favorite match that aired on Monday Night Raw? Leave that in the comments below, and we might get to it one of these times. Most definitely. Most definitely. I would like – I like. I, and plus, I, even if we don't – we will definitely respond because uh, uh, if we open up discussion, uh, I, I just want to he- get your opinion. I want to I want to know people's opinion, uh, what they love, what they don't love. Uh, there is no hate on this, so it, <laughs> anything. I know if it's doing the clown or if it's something flippy that I normally wouldn't watch. If you have something that you enjoy, there's got to be a reason you enjoy it. Uh, let us know because I would like to break it down and see what. Uh, what it is that you liked about it and we can go from there and this is opens up the forum to Im- improve professional wrestling we're on a mission here people we're on a mission in the 2020s into 21 in improving professional wrestling for the greater good because the one thing i don't want to see is this business go away and slowly shrink and die that's for sure that is for sure And if you enjoyed this at all, please do us a huge favor. Hammer that subscribe button so you don't miss any future episodes. Leave any questions, comments, or feedback down below. And until next time, we'll catch you later.